Hi everybody, Miss Julia here. I thought it'd be fun to do a video where you can take a lot of the different materials that you would have at home and do them in a mixed media piece. So um, I, the whole idea of this piece is technique and color and fun. So have fun with it and enjoy. So for this video, we're going to start with pencil. We're going to use a bunch of different supplies for this to, to kind of get a a feel for how you can use your supplies you have at home a little differently. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shape out um, a hummingbird. So the first thing I'm going to do is take and I'm going to draw in a little oval for his body and then connect it to this oval I'm going to add a circle but I want him kind of looking down so think of your circle down a little further than think of his back curving like this. So have that angled down a little bit. Then I'm going to come around the corner. Right about here is where the beak is going to start. They have a long thin beak. Then I'm going to give him a little bit of a neck. And then I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to erase out what I don't need. So now you can see the shape of his head comes around. Let's round him off a little bit more on top of his head. There we go. And now even with the, the center of the beak, you line that up and you put an oval for his eye. So that's all I'm going to draw. I'm going to do the rest uh, of the bird with marker, but I'm going to move down to where the flower is going to be. So he's kind of zooming in on the flower. So right even with your beak, I want you to come down and, and you know, remember um, little um, hummingbirds are, are small. So the flower has got to be quite large. So I'm going to make a great big line like this, approximately three fingers wide. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to draw a little point for a petal. And then I'm going to draw a long cone for the shape of the flower and a stem. Okay, and then on the other side, I'm going to draw a wavy line down. And on this side, I'm going to draw a wavy line over to the side a little bit. Then from that wavy line, I'm going to create a petal. And from this wavy line, I'm going to create a petal. I'm going to put a little petal on the other side, kind of poking through, and a petal on the other side, poking through. Then I'm going to add a center where the little, little stamens are in the, the pistils in the middle. And then I'm going to just hint a little line down the center of each petal. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a marker and I'm going to use a blue marker and for the blue marker I'm going to take and color his body right down his back and notice I'm using this is a, a Crayola washable marker so if it's any brand of washable marker you can test it out first before you do it uh, we'll be able to do this technique I'm showing you. So washable markers will lift when you add water to them. So they actually work a little bit like a watercolor. So I'm going to add the color to his back and I'm just going to kind of feather it all along here as it transitions into the belly of his body. Then at the bottom of his body, I'm going to add, I'm just pushing on my marker so the lines are kind of fat. I'm adding his tail then about right about where the original oval ended is where you're going to start your wing so i'm just going to put a wing then i'm going to put the spine of the wing the spine of the wing all the way down now on the other side i'm going to add the other half of that wing i'm going to add and I'm again pressing into my marker. So I'm going to add a little thickness at the top of the wings here. 
so it transitions into the spine of the bone of the ring. So now I'm going to take a little blue and I'm just going to feather a little touch of blue in here, a little touch of blue at the base of his belly. Not much, I'm just tapping a little color and then I'm letting it fade up. I'm going to put a little bit at the top of his beak and a little, little bit at the bottom of the beak, but I'm going to leave a little bit of room for color in there. So now I'm going to switch over to orange. So I'm still using the marker. I'm going to use an orange, which is a color opposite. And I'm going to just kind of push into that and create the under part of each one of these wings. All right. Then on his belly, start at the bottom. And you're just tapping a little bit of color into that belly area, let fade up. And then you're going to feather into it from the sides where the blue ends. You're going to just add a little orange. And you're going to add a little thicker orange at the base of the head. Now there's a lot of different types of hummingbirds. They're all different colors. So if you feel like you want to add like another color to this, or you want to do something a little different, you go ahead. Okay, now I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to take a little water on my brush, not a real drippy brush, but a little water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this blue paint, which is the marker, and I'm going to fade the edges of my tail. You see how it's lifting like a paint? I'm just softening some of my lines. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm just going to pull the orange and the blue together and kind of connect the feather now and round out these edges so it looks a little more like a wing. So I'm connecting them. See how it turns almost like a medium gray green when you put it on there? the colors kind of mix a little bit so you don't want to over mix the colors you're just kind of letting them kind of merge into one another but don't over mix them so it looks like the wings are moving so i'm leaving a little bit of white around the eye and then i'm going to move down to my lily so i'm going to start with a yellow crayon i'm going to take this yellow crayon and i'm going to go all the way up this cone first and I'm just going to leave the top of the cone I'm just going to let it kind of stripe its way up then I'm going to go down one side of the, of the stem then I'm going to go down the middle of each flower with a bit of yellow let it fade towards the center where that line is then I'm going to go up these little stems and I'm going to fill in the top of these little seeds. There we go. A little bit on this one. You can make that a fat line that gets thinner and maybe a little fatter towards the base. Okay, now I'm going to take a pink marker and I'm going to outline the edge of my flower and I'm going to just stripe my way in. So I'm bringing just a bit of color into the flower. So I'm going to like feather my way in. Go all the way in here. So it's going to merge its way into that yellow. Come along the other side. And then the one on the top. And they sometimes have a bit of wave to the petals, sometimes they don't. Depends on the type of lily. Okay, now on this base of the lily, I'm gonna switch to green. I'm gonna take a green marker and I'm gonna just put a shadow. I'm gonna come up the flower with a little bit right here. And then I'm gonna create a couple of uh, leaves, but the leaves look a little, for, for lilies, look a little bit like a petal and I'm going to leave a tiny bit of white and 
and I might hint maybe one that would be below it. Like that. Okay, and in the white spots, I'm gonna take a little more of the yellow crayon and I'm just gonna add a little touch of highlight. All right, now I'm gonna switch to chalk pastel. I'm gonna take a pink chalk pastel and I'm gonna use this to create a little bit of a petal, just loose, like a flower that's in the distance. Okay, and I'm gonna go like this. I'm just kind of outlining it. There's no set pattern to this. There's no, there, there's about five or six petals on a lily, so you don't need to get every single one of them in there. You're just trying to give them kind of out of focus flowers in the, in the distance. So don't get into great detail back here. So in the centers of those, I'm gonna take pink crayon and it's gonna actually blend my pastel into, and it keeps it kind of blurry. So I'm just using almost like a side of a pink crayon. I'm kind of giving the impression of the flower and I'm merging that chalk with a waxy crayon. Now I'm gonna do the same with the green. I'm gonna just lightly, I'm not going real heavy, I'm just lightly putting the stems of these flowers in. So you kind of have to find a home for each flower stem. Then I want you to put in some soft, not too detailed leaves in the background. Just, they kind of are almost symmetrical on both sides of the stem. There we go. Now, in the center of those flowers, I'm gonna go back to my yellow crayon and I'm gonna just glow a little bit of yellow in the center of each one of these. And then I'm gonna take a little touch of yellow into my leaves, just to add a little extra color back there, no detail. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of the pink marker and I'm just gonna add a little edge or two to some of these flowers. Just right in on top of what you have, just an edge or two. You're kind of going almost beyond your crayon a bit. It's like a, a, a bit of an outline, but not an outline. We just, just here and there, not every single line. Just making the heads of those pop a little bit more. Now I'm gonna take an orange Pastel. So, I mean, I'm jumping between supplies here. If you feel like you want to use a crayon for this step, use a crayon. If you feel like you want to switch to colored pencil, use colored pencil. Mix it up a little. Kind of, you know, try a few things with other things. So now I'm going to take um, a little touch of black pen and I'm only just going to fill in the eye of my hummingbird, but I'm leaving a little bit of a white rim, rim around his eye. So the other thing is I, I noticed I, I didn't paint his chest. I'm gonna just take and merge a little of those colors without over mixing. I'm just taking a little bit of water and just merging it. And I'm just with the dirt that's on my brush, kind of feathering my way up his belly so that it looks like feathers. There we go. So now in the background, I'm gonna switch again to my chalk pastel and I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna dust this all over my background. And the dusting adds that soft coat that will allow some of your colors to go in a little more out of focus. I'm kind of going in around my flowers, just kind of working it in around. Then I'm gonna go from my yellow, I can blend that a little on this coat. Just enough to get rid of the dry look of the chalk. And the paper that I'm using has a, I just took it out of a sketchbook, has a little bit more tooth to it. It's not as slippery as like a computer paper would be. So I, like a sketchbook paper was, um, is probably better, something with a bit of tooth. You can even, even leave it in your sketchbook so it has a little cushion to it. So now I'm gonna take a nice bright, yellow green, lime green, and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my way up 
give the impression of garden back in here. So it might not be part of these flowers, it might be other flowers. So I'm just gonna kind of wiggle this in. Nothing definite. Then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna smudge it slightly. I don't wanna work all that green into the yellow because then it just becomes a plain green background. So I'm just gonna wiggle, blow off the excess powder. So now I wanna deepen this just to give it some depth. So I'm gonna take a darker green and I'm gonna go deeper at the bottom. And I'm just gonna work my way up. I'm kind of going in around my flower a little bit here. Then I'm just gonna merge that. Again, don't over mix it. You wanna see the difference in those colors. I'm gonna just leaf it up a little by turning my chalk and pushing into the paper so it gives a little bit more of a leafy look. Smudge slightly, just smudge a little bit. So whatever, whatever you decide as far as color, um, you can change the colors of your lilies. They could be uh, orange, you could make them uh, like a purpley shade. And then I want you to just experiment with your markers and water. So now I can take a little water and I can wet that pink and leave some of the white. So you can either leave the marker as it is or try wetting it because it turns to a watercolor if you wet it. But see how much more vibrant this front one looks compared to those background ones. So you could add different kinds of flowers in the background. So have some fun with this. This is um, just experiment with the supplies that you have, have at home and uh, yeah, uh, be creative.